And greetings. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the Steve Day Show here live and on demand on Blaze TV radio and podcast. I am Steve Dace alongside Todd Erzin. And no, we, we didn't do this on purpose. I haven't I haven't worn this pullover in like over a year. Just great minds think alike, dude. That's what we're going to go with. Then. <laughs> I'm, I'm, that's solid. But. I thought about this is the new Blaze mandated show uniform, like school uniforms, you know, and then come back tomorrow and uh, we were able to uh, talk them into uh, ending that restriction after just one day. But I think as the, the dude code says, we just got to own this. We just both showed up independently of one another wearing the same shirt. It's not like the same pink shirt or something like that. I think we're within you think code so? boundaries. Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right. We're not a we're not a Lindsey Graham joke. We're good. You think? Yeah, it, totally accidental. Okay. We're not. Are we step brothers? No. No. Okay. All right. Uh, too bad Aaron's not here. Maybe he would have worn the exact same thing, and we could have made it a three. Spent two hours that. talking about that, it. I was going to say it that, and I just realized that's right. As I started to say it, that I should not. I should not say that. Where were we? Welcome to the show. Uh, brought to you by our friends over at First Cup Coffee Company. Uh, they are the Patreon-owned coffee company with a flavor for every freedom-loving American. You can get 10% off if you use my last name, Days, as the promo code when you go to firstcup.com. Again, that is firstcup.com. Use the promo code Days to get 10% off. And if you subscribe, you'll get an additional 10% off for the life of your subscription as well. Firstcup.com. Use the promo code Days. Also, don't forget... Still, I think the best piece of content that as a network we have produced thus far, at least since I've been on this network, uh, which is about five and a half years now, uh, you want to check it out. Bought and Paid is the name. Bought and Paid for how politicians get filthy rich and you get $30 off to see it on Blaze TV with the code Dace Originals at DaceOriginals.com. You don't want to miss this. Bought and Paid for daceoriginals.com $30 off with the code Dace Originals. Speaking of bought and paid for I saw this tweet this morning from my good friend Congressman Chip Roy from the state of Texas let me just read it to you verbatim the Republican Speaker of the House is seeking a rule to pass almost a hundred billion billion with a B a hundred billion dollars in foreign aid while unquestionably dangerous criminals, terrorists, and fentanyl pour across our border. The board, this border vote in this package is a watered down, dangerous cover vote I will oppose. Now, now, how did we get here? Why is it always like this? The names change. If Kevin McCarthy were speaker right now, Todd, do you think things would be any different than they are right now? No. No. For us on just a personal level, it would be better. Because then we wouldn't have a guy uh, claiming that he uh, is the the imprint of a biblical worldview. Okay. Um, He's the example for America. So he's he's smearing our prime directive as he's doing it, right? No one's going to confuse Kevin McCarthy with that. Fair, all right. Fair. Okay. So, but 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 you know that's just our corner of the world would prefer it the other way around for that reason. Mm-hmm. But substantively, would anything be different? No. If John Boehner were speaker right now, substantively, would anything be different? No. If Paul Ryan were speaker right oh, no. now, no. Denny Hastert. Well, I mean, some kids might get molested, but I mean, other than that, uh, if 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 he were allegedly, uh, if if he were Speaker of the House, would would anything be substantively different right now? No, no. And I I just mentioned guys that have been Speaker over the course of the last twenty years. Yeah, you, you t- I think the next guy you'd have to take off is Newton, his predecessor, probably, right? Yeah. I'm, I, well, or if, if, the guy who came after him, Bob, what the, Bob Livingston. Yeah. Bob Livingston. If, if, well, we did have the first six months of Newt's speakership before all the other yes. things involving his personal life and everything else swallowed him whole at the time. Right. But yeah, you, I mean, that's 30 years now though. Yeah, well, you're my point. You're taking, I was in college. Yep. So was I. Well, I was loosely attending. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> There's a record of me in a registrar's office somewhere, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure what else they've got. <laughs> Probably a record <laughs> down at the uh, Ingham County <laughs> Prosecutor's Office, maybe. Uh, but anyway, um, that's 20 years, guys. Vastly different men in terms of their personas and and the, the results are the same. Why? I'm going to explain that to you in just a second. Uh, the bottom of the hour. Let's just live dangerously, man. We're going to do buy, sell, or hold for the very first time without Aaron. So I have, uh, I've put out the, uh, the feeler for the submissions. We have hundreds of them. And I'm like, dude, here's what we're going to do. I've not looked at a single one of these. We're just going to randomly talk, go through them live, as many as we can, starting at the bottom of the hour. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Let's dance with the devil in the pale moonlight, brother. I don't know what's coming. All right. Let's see what's out there. Cancellation. <laughs> isn't, but well, isn't that a sunk cost on this program? <laughs> at any moment, at any given time, that's pretty much a sunk cost, right? Yes. Fair. All right. So we will do buy, sell, or hold beginning at the bottom of the hour. And then we'll be joined by our good friend, the prophet of woe and lamentation himself, uh, the one and only Daniel Horowitz. That is coming up uh, towards the end of the program. Uh, first, though, I want to give some props to our friends over at Jace Medical. Uh, I'll just give you my own little personal Jace testimony now, by the way. Uh, they, I, I, the sinus infection has returned. I've not had one of these since COVID. You know, with all the viral interference out there, but you guys know I used to get one of these every year. Notice this year you didn't have to put up with me, you know, doing the halls and everything else while doing the show and and working that through my jaw. People love that, Todd. They you do. know that they do. They did. They, they, I mean, they, they just can you do this all the time? And they they, they really loved they, that. They never write to you about it at all. No, they they hated it. In fact, uh, but this year you did not have to endure that because I did not either. Because here's what I typically do because I'm a guy. Said sinus infection begins. I try to fight it with everything OTC I can. It doesn't work, but I don't want to go to the doctor because I don't have time. All right. And it, that doesn't work. So you guys put up with two or three days of me, uh, you know, doing um, doing more hauls than the former mayor of Tallahassee, Florida, Andrew Gillum, did cocaine. Okay. That doesn't work. And I can't smell and, and I can't, and I'm snuffing, and I'm, I'm blowing my nose and sneezing all the time. And everybody's happy, right? Everybody loves when this happens. This is a delightful return down memory lane. It is. It is. And then finally, I'm like, I can't do this anymore. And I go to the doctor. All right. That didn't happen this time. You know why? Because I realized, wait a minute, I've got doxycycline, which is what I use anyway to beat this every time. I've got to just sit right there in my Jace case. And I realized my Jace case actually expires at the end of this month. So that sinus infection hit the perfect time. All right. The doxycycline was not expired. The Jace case, by the way, that reminds me, Jace, I got to update my case. Uh, but uh, it was right there. Very practical fill in, save me time, knock this puppy out. Wasn't, you know, doing uh, batches of hauls and sepical lozenges. All right. So thank you to Jace Medical. That is a very practical and largely inconsequential reason you want to have your Jace case. There's far more important ones, you know, like they might try to ban more Nobel Prize winning medications again in the future, stuff like that. So get your supply, your backup supply of the most, some of the most venerable antibiotics out there like amoxicillin and doxycycline. Yes, you can get ivermectin in your Jace case too because now you can expand it uh, to what you want. Customize it to what you need or a loved one needs when you go to jacemedical.com. J-A-S-E is how it is spelled. jacemedical.com. Use the code DACE at checkout for a discount at jacemedical.com. All right. So I, I read to you guys the, the tweet uh, that uh, my buddy Congressman Chip Roy put out just a few minutes ago about this bill for foreign aid that they are rushing, Republicans, the leadership anyway, uh, is rushing to get through Congress, right? Okay, and and yesterday I saw this tweet from the aforementioned Daniel Horowitz, who will be with us later today. He says, he's, he, he wrote, we've gone from Republicans treating reauthorization and appropriation bills as drop dead must pass under any circumstance to any Democrat desire now being a must pass even with GOP control of the chamber. Now, your friendly neighborhood conservative talk radio host 
that you probably have helped make a stinking amount of money is getting paid by somebody you're likely not aware of to tell you things like this in response to what Daniel points out. Well, they only have like a tested majority, and that's they, they, that's all they can do. They don't have votes, and that's all they can do. Okay, and so we we gotta now we can't shut the government down. It's an election year. Does we know every win when the government shuts down, except for all the times previously that we did. Uh, but we can't do that. Okay, and so uh, the polls will go against us. Actually, the polls pretty much suck right now. Uh, but we gotta do this, and that's just how we do. We gotta make the trains run on time. And why you wanna help the Democrats win? Does any of that sound familiar to you at all? Painfully so. And probably even in that rather effeminate tone of voice, at least. Probably not. But if we were being truthful, that is the tone that it should be communicated in. Okay. Um, Exactly wrong. Everything that you just heard is exactly wrong. See, it's, it's not that that's the best they can do because they have a slim majority. Folks, this is why they have such a slim majority. Like we talked about yesterday, we're not just going to sit here and, and deal with symptoms all the time. At some point, we got to actually attack the disease here, right? Because when John Boehner was in charge, it was a slim majority too, even though they had like a 20-seat larger lead than they have right now. Still couldn't get things done. Still had to still had to pass everything with, you know, I used to sit here every night on the old Salem Radio Network show talking about every night they're just passing bills with the, in the Republican Tea Party Congress with a majority of Democrat support. I've done all these shows before. You've heard all these shows before, all right? To quote the great prophet's talking head, same as it ever was, okay? I mean, it, nothing changes. Why? Because there are fundamental iron laws of the universe, laws of nature and nature's God that we cannot avoid. We cannot outrun. We cannot outwit and we cannot outlast. They exist. They pre-exist us in our way of life. And they will exist long after our way of life is but a footnote, which with Red Lobster now potentially declaring bankruptcy is probably any minute. Okay? But I digress. This party is unevenly yoked. Are there cowards? Oh, for sure. <laughs> yes. Okay. Are there sellouts? Absolutely. Yeah. Are there people that are just there because of um, who they want to be and not what they want to do? Indubitably. Yes. Are there people there that would literally do anything leadership told them to do? Just complete, total, Peter Principle proving empty suits. Bet your house. Of course. Are there people there that are corrupt? Amen, amen, I say to you. Yeah, verily, verily. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Are there people there who are captured that, uh, you know, the, the new phrase, um, I, I joked about this last week. Uh, well, then I had a meeting with uh, the FBI or CIA. Let me translate for you what that means to, to channel Kevin, New- Kevin Nealon's once great subliminal man on Saturday Night Live. Let me translate that for you. What it means is uh, they showed me the embarrassing personal information about me that they have. That, that, or they cut me the check. That's what that means, right? Correct. Typically. Okay. All right. All these things are true, right? Yes. All right. Here's the thing, though. Are, are these things recently true? No. No. Now this, this, did this just all happen in the last 90 days? No. In the last five years? No. No. All right. So this is inherently true of politics, just as a general rule, in any era, in any custom, in any culture, in any epoch. What I just explained, there are examples and archetypes of, right? Yes. Okay. The problem is, that all of the factors I just mentioned are fundamental to the existence of the Republican Party. Like there, like there is no principled critical mass movement of, of beings that keep any of these factors at bay. It doesn't exist. There's always a remnant but a remnant, it always is. 
There are two reasons for this. One is moral, and the other is ideological. On a moral level, on a moral level, by and large, the American right is some form of a grift. Meaning, ultimately, you want to pay people like me to tell you what you want to hear, to counter the things that you hear from the other side that you don't agree with. The problem is, are those things true all of the time? No. I mean, we'd like them to be. Wouldn't it be great if your side was 100% correct and everything, every narrative from your side was always 100% pure and integrity filled? Wouldn't that be great? I can't even compute that dream. That's You know why? Because we live east of Eden and it's absolutely impossible to achieve. That's why we said the other day, every movement has to hold on to its contrarians. If you want to know, you want to know how, you know, we were a movement once. How'd we become a cult? Or how'd we lose our salt? And now we're just nothing but grifters. It always starts when you lose your contrarians, when you don't want to listen to them anymore. You start killing prophets. Sh- shunning and canceling people because they're the, they always ask the Columbo one more question, all right? Anytime a movement does that, it'll cease being a movement. And then it will devolve into some form of circular pleasuring cycle, okay? Everybody just sits around, lifts up a butt cheek, squeezes one off. That, that's a masterpiece theater. That, that smells exquisite. I mean, that, that's what they'll do, okay? Uh, you pay me, I pay you. You pay me to lie, I'll pay you to receive said lies, Okay? I'll just give you an example from five minutes ago before we went on the air. All right? I see a tweet from somebody that the Real Clear Politics polling average hasn't been updated in 10 days. I'm like, well, that's weird. I kind of, I'm a big fan of the RCP average, by the way. I've used it for my show here for decades. And have, have they not done any polls in 10 days? Why would we not update it in 10 days? Anybody have a clue? I mean, I'm, I'm seeing polls in my feet all the time. So, uh, listen, of course, on, in conservative media, the trend line right now for Republicans and for, for Trump are not, is not good collectively in the polls right now. Now, I'm not really all that concerned about it. We're not voting today, are we? You know what? We might be. <laughs> it's, just, it's, a, it's a festival of election. <laughs> it's, a, it's election year now, literally. Okay. You can just start voting now if you want. All right? I'm sure. Vote early, vote often. Whenever you... Just get it started early on. Aren't you, know? you just telling me about that Dropbox you just drove by yeah, on exactly. the way Exactly. So it, we, we could actually be voting now. I, I, but typically we don't. Right? <laughs> okay. So supposedly we're not voting for another six months. Allegedly. All right? Something tells me some of those votes are getting filled out right now, if you know what I'm saying, money. All right? Anyway. The point is, I'm not typically all that concerned, you know, one way or the other. I'm old enough to remember when Gallup said Dukakis was going to beat George H.W. Bush by 18 points in July, and then then Bush won California. Okay, I mean, it's just a lot can change between April, you know, what is it today, the 17th, and Election Day. A lot can change, okay? But we're not going to cover all these new polls that are better for Democrats and Biden than the ones that were coming out a month ago. That's why the betting odds have changed. So when the polling was great, conservative media wrote all kinds of poll, all kinds of stories for you about how good the polling was, right? Mm-hmm. And when the polling is bad now, we're not writing a bunch of stories right now about how good the polling is. A lot of people that love to, on our side and conservative media, love to cover the betting markets and stuff. They're not tweeting about the betting markets right now because the trend line is bad. And if, if your paycheck and an audience ultimately is, is your is, is your standard, and I'm not gonna not a lot of people are gonna tune in to hear we might lose this time. I mean that's not you know we're, we're, I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet. We're conducting a little experiment on on one of our uh, one of our platform channels uh, without giving it away. Victoria, give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. Did day two show the same uh, trend that uh, day one did? on uh, that certain platform that we are uh, 
uh, doing a certain uh, sort of a branding and messaging. So, so, okay. All right. So I'm doing a little experiment right now. After the end of two weeks, I'll tell you guys what it is. Okay. I won't keep it from you, but if I tell you what it is up front, then that might spoil the control group, right? Sure. So I don't want you to know specifically what it is until after. And after the all, this is for science. <laughs> it's an every, it, thus, not just science, Todd. This is for the, the science. science. Yes. The science. Aren't we all? Yes. All right. And, and so, there is an incentivization structure within our own side on a moral level to, to, to disincentivize telling each other the truth on some level. Now, that doesn't mean everything we tell each other all the time or we talk about to you guys is dishonest. There's, there's, that's not what I mean. But I mean, there's, there's two kinds of, or there's two forms of, of lie, right? There's the lie of commission, and not a lot of people, there's some, you know, you probably know the names that do that, but not as many people in our industry, I think, do that as maybe get accused, okay? But a lot of people, I think, do the lie of omission. Why? Because telling you that would not be good for your feedback. You guys won't reward that content, you know? Now, I will. I, I don't care, you know, because I'd, I'd rather, you know, lose the show than feel like I, I didn't tell you what I really thought. And I, you know, I'd perform the Joker pencil trick on myself just out of self loathing if I ever got into the engagement farming game, not what I got into this for. So I don't care. You know, uh, someone sent me an email the other day. You seem to fight your audience a lot. Well, are you new here? So <laughs> okay. that's tell me you just started listening last week without saying I just started listening last week. <laughs> Have you met people? Yes. All right. So um, that's part of it. And, and, and a lot of that disincentivization structure against being brutally honest with each other stems from the fact that we get lied to and gaslit by the mainstream sources all of the time, right? And so you almost feel a compulsion to tell the other side of the story, even if it's maybe a little... BS itself, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just as just to make things even. That that's part of it. But you know what? We could overcome that. We could. We could overcome that. The second one is the one we can't overcome. The ideological problem. There are just too many people here, as I've pointed out before. There are too many people in this party that just don't agree with one another that just have different priorities. Like I'm, I'm just here to advance my ambitions. Like I'm, I'm, I'm here to uh, uh, get earmarks for my district. Uh, like I am a libertarian. Like I'm a Christian conservative. Uh, like I'm a small P progressive uh, Teddy Roosevelt uh, Republican. Um, like I'm a flat out liberal Republican. Um, just, that's not going to fly. Doesn't work. The party, the Republican Party on a national level is incapable of governing the country. Incapable. I mean, look, the Trump presidency was, I think, confirmation of this, if you ever doubted it. Who controlled Congress the first two years that Donald Trump was president? Republicans. Did they build the wall? They did not. Did they repeal Obamacare? They did not. Exactly. What were the two biggest promises of the 2016 election, by the way? Those. Those two things were, yeah. Neither one of them happened. Why? Too many Republicans in charge that didn't want to repeal Obamacare and didn't want to build a wall. So it didn't happen. This is why in the Trump presidency, the things that he was unilaterally empowered to do via, I mean, we mocked Obama's pen in a phone, but frankly, if it weren't for Trump's pen in a phone, his presidency would have been an unmitigated disaster. Because almost all the, I can't think of anything. They did a, a tax cut that got erased, you know, five minutes after Joe Biden became president. Other than that, pretty much everything good, and they did do a lot of good. But if you think of everything good the Trump presidency did, it was pretty much all done with a pen and a phone, mm -hmm. right? Him making, him, you know, I, 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 phone calls made to people that got appointed. You're running that department. Make that happen. Move the Jerusalem embassy, for example. Or he signed executive orders. And that's why pretty much everything good that he did got erased with Joe Biden's pen in a phone, provided he could find it, 10 seconds after he got inaugurated. The party cannot govern. It's not just a question of cowardice um, or cowardice. It's, it's just not that. Fundamentally, 
It's not that it won't. I think this is important to understand. It's, 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 not, that, it's not that monkeys won't fly out of your butt. It's that they can't. Like, like there's no amount of monkeys that you're going to ingest like Richard Gere once did, uh, allegedly a gerbil. And, 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 and eventually you'll squeeze them out and they'll fly away. No, it won't happen. It can't. It's impossible. Didn't happen. Can't happen. It can't govern. And this is why, whether it's Mike Johnson, I am the avatar of a biblical worldview, whether it's Paul Ryan, I am a crossfitter who goes home at night at 6 o'clock to be with my children every weekend, whether it's John Boehner, I'm probably drunk and I'm two packs in by noon, okay? Whether it's Denny Hastert, I probably don't want to make any wisecracks about Denny Hastert because they'd all be very unfortunate. It doesn't matter, though. It, it, the vices, the personalities, the, the factions, the eras. This is 20 years of, of GOP speaker history. I just went through off the top of my head, right, Todd? Mm-hmm. Dramatically different men, eras, different presidents, different times, different issues were the priority. Okay? And yet, Led Zeppelin, the song remains the same. Why? It cannot govern. It can't. Political parties, by and large, anyway, are usually incumbent protection rackets to some degree or another. So the party doesn't want to take votes that expose to the base how, how truly deep the betrayal goes. Although I frankly doubt whether the base in this current iteration is positioned to do anything, a damn thing about it anyway, but that's a separate topic, okay? They don't want to risk that exposure. And so they've got to they got to make the trains run on time. And so the only way we're going to get the votes we can uh, to get anything out of the house is we just got to run democratic legislation. So they do. And that's what Boehner did. That's what he did too. Ten years ago, same stuff. Nothing's changed. Nothing has changed. Cake is the same. The frosting is zanier. Different people may be baking it. Different people may be cashing in on selling it to you, but nothing has fundamentally changed. The Trump era didn't change anything. Nothing. Didn't disrupt anything. Nothing. At best, you can say it exposed these things and made them more obvious. So how did we respond? Well, in 2022, we had one of the most incumbent positive midterm elections in American history. That's, that's, how, that's, that's why I don't get into the, we just got to keep exposing Steve. To what end? Okay? To what end? I mean, I keep exposing myself. I can keep dropping my drawers and mooning you. It's not, you know, eventually, it's, all that exposure is not going to be, you know what, on second thought, that's a glorious gluteus, gluteus maximus. I just completely misunderstood it the first 7,000 times you showed it to me, Steve. Now I, I realize I'm, it's quite an attractive derriere. Nothing changes. The same thing you looked at before. It's not like people didn't know these things. Well, expose, expose, expose. Well, they just went out and put in the exact same people in office, did they not? They did. They did. Nothing changed. Because nothing changes. And I don't believe it can fundamentally change. There, there's, there's two possibilities. If you had a really strong leader like what a DeSantis has done in Florida, where his overall popularity forces this, enough squishes to go with him to drive a, a singular agenda. But short of that, we would have to build up a critical mass of, of somewhere between Chip Roy and Bob Good. <laughs> kind of, and, and we don't have 50 years to do that. We don't. You know, We don't have the resources to do it anyway, even if we did. So it is what it is. It's a it's a party. The Democrats are the party you don't you you can't you don't want to govern, and the Republicans are the party that cannot govern. They can't. Cannot herd in all the cats. It's impossible. I know we like to think in our modern sense that these worldview differences can be papered over, but in the real world, when it's time to actually act on them, they cannot.
Remember back in the day when you could do all the normal things you wanted to in a day without feeling it, that uh, you were going to have a breakdown, a yank something, pull something at a moment's notice? Remember when you didn't have to decide whether or not it was worth it to do something because it was probably going to hurt or aggravate some of your soreness? Uh, living with pain is no joke. And it's the kind of thing that can frankly just do a lot to debilitate your quality of life. That's why you want to check out Relief Factor. We're not guaranteeing you it is the solution that you've been looking for, but we think the odds are pretty good because over the years, over 1 million people have tried the three-week quick start from Relief Factor, and about 70% of them have seen such great results in three weeks or less, they've stuck around with the product long term. So what is the product? Well, it's drug free, even though it's a supplement that was created by physicians who can prescribe drugs, but they were hoping there was a a drug free way of going after the inflammation that is likely causing your chronic pain that, that wouldn't lead to the side effects like, you know, drowsiness and some other things you may get with prolonged use of uh, those drugs. And so Relief Factor is their best attempt at that. It goes right after the inflammation that is likely the cause of your chronic pain. And so they're so confident in it, they've made it about as affordable as they can to get you started. Just 20 bucks, 1995. Just 20 bucks to do the three week quick start and see if you don't see a difference in your pain in three weeks or less when you go to relieffactor.com. Again, head to relieffactor.com. Once more, that's relieffactor.com. Well, for the first time unto the breach, Mr. Erzin, we go sans Aaron. We go by ourselves. We've never done this before without him. I don't think we've ever done it before without him selecting what are the propositions that you and I no, will consider. I have no recollection of such an event happening. So this is a new era here with buy, sell, or hold. Doesn't mean it'll be better. It probably won't, but it will nevertheless be new. I have received almost 400 submissions since yesterday. And rather than curate all of those, and then on top of that, I thought it'd be more interesting not to, I figured let's just go through these in real time, as many as we can, uh, with the least amount of self-edit. I mean, obviously, if something's profane or we think libelous, you know, we'll, we'll probably stay away. I can't guarantee that either. Okay, so let's get through as many of these as possible. No subject is off limits. So this is basically as close to a, a, a Rorschach test of our audience it as is. we could possibly do. It, it is. Uh-oh. Uh, get, an, get an idea of exactly how much thumb on the scaling does Aaron actually do with this every week, right? Um, <laughs> and, and I don't even... It, uh, you know what? Because these are, are uncurated and, and these are in the raw, man. We're barebacking. These are barebacked buy, seller, hold submissions. I, I'm going to let the hold happen. Fair? Because you never know. Okay. All right. I mean, this is, this is like this is like a box of chocolates, brother. You never know what you're going to get. Okay. Fair. I think. All right. Anything you, else? Because I've not looked at any of these yet. So any anything else before we start? You, it's probably a good thing that we did it this way and didn't like put this on Victoria's plate as well. I mean, that's that could be a level of scarring, first week scarring that nobody can endure. You and I are both dad, both girl dads. Yeah. We don't want to submit subject. No. It's a, an innocent and uh, virtuous young woman uh, to the submissions of buy, sell, or hold. At least not yet. Could be just walk off the set stuff, leaving you and it, I. It, it could be. It could yeah. also be a lawsuit, frankly. But yes. All right. Let's get to it. Okay. Uh, here we go. We start with a familiar name. Dacian memes for unvaccinated fiends. Todd, he says the new buy, sell, or hold slogan should be beheadings are on Wednesdays. <laughs> Why wait until Wednesdays? But, but at least there's a day. There, there, at least there's a day. I, I, but sure. I have to sell because we must add the caveat. After a fair trial. After a fair trial, of course. After a fair trial, of course. Okay? I mean, and, and fair trials can be speedy and swifty nowadays. Fair? Fair. I mean, we've got 20 minutes, is it 15 minute cities? Right? Is yes, that what they're do. called? They are. 15 minute cities. We've got 20, uh, 22 minute news cycles. I mean, I think we could have 10 minute trials for some of these people. You okay with 10? I'm good. I think we get a pretty good uh, summation of where things stand in about 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, but, 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 but that is important. There must be a fair trial, of course, so that all righteousness is fulfilled. Fair? Fair. All right. Um, all right, here we go. 
Judy Anna says, before this decade is out, Aaron and Steve will face off in a lightsaber duel over which family's new baby girl is the most precocious. Todd will referee to make sure they set their feet. That checks a lot of boxes. Bye. That does. I mean, I think Judy Anna hit a, tri- I mean, that's a trifecta to use horse racing term right there, right? Because nobody, wa- nobody wants to watch that if they don't set their feet. I mean, this is crucial. BMAC says, I am truly too disheartened to even submit something. We are collectively handing over a great country to, as you say it, the spirit of the age. Bye. See, I'm going to sell. I, I mean, while I agree with him in, in, in you know, his premise, I, I think this is where you have to... I mean, this is the gallow... If gallows humor is all you have, you've got to take it to the fullest. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, this is going to be the dumbest end of an empire in human history. It, 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 it already is. Mike Johnson saying, I see myself as a wartime speaker. Means if Mike Johnson's your wartime speaker, brother, the war is lost. All right. Yes. That, that war was lost. It probably never happened. Okay. The war is over which sweater vest uh, to wear on a given day. Okay. That's the war. All right. So if that's what you have, if that's we where we are. today, so that's what we decided <laughs> on that true. front. Might not have been the best day to make that reference. Please tell me. Of course, I'm blue and you're gray, so I think that's our out. Well, that's uh, some symbolism there. <laughs> uh-huh. Let's not even, let's not go there. Anyway, um, but I, I think lean into the gallows humor. Lean into it. If you got to go, go with a smile. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Lean into it a little bit. That's what I would do. All right. China call says buy, sell, or hold. Aaron will get a raise after these two weeks on leave. Sell. Sell. Aaron is in far greater danger of being Wally Pip than leveraging this for a raise. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yes. Victoria keeps dropping the mic like she's doing, you know, I don't know. I mean, she's doing a fantastic job so far. So, Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. And Aaron gets credit for training you, you know, but I'm sure, you know, I'm sure Mr. Gehrig picked up a few tips from Wally Pip too before you replaced him in the, uh, before you replaced him in the lineup, sure, right? Sure, sure. Probably learned a thing or two, you know? So no, th- this was um, selecting someone very capable and then training them very capably is really actually not the way to leverage your current contract situation to help us discover, help any business discover someone who could replace you is not typically what enhances one's value within said enterprise. Fair? Fair. Yeah, agreed. Um, Ben Johnson says, buy, sell, or hold. In the next year, we will see at least some Republicans advocate for abortion up to birth like the Democrats. I'll start this one. I will say sell, and I'll explain why. I do think by the end of this election cycle, at some point, John, Donald Trump will say a woman should have a right to an abortion at some point in time. I do think he will say that. And he's, he's on the brink of it now. So, I mean, it, w- it would not be, from, from the positions that he's articulating now, it, it really wouldn't be all that much of a leap and if you're in the abolitionist camp in our audience and that's a growing segment in our in our own listenership here you would probably make the argument that if you're advocating for 15 or 16 weeks you're basically saying that you have a right to kill your kid before that you're implying it right Mm -hmm. okay so now we're just talking about codifying something you're already implying fair okay but let me tell you why i don't believe this will happen and it's, it's the same reason why I don't give Mitch McConnell, I, I, I'll give him baseline credit that he did it, but I won't turn him into a superhero that he wouldn't seat Merrick Garland for the Supreme Court justice to replace Antonin Scalia in, 20, in 2016. And here's why. Um, if What was the number two issue in the exit polls in the 2016 election? You remember what it was? I don't. It was judicial appointments. The top two issues in the 2016 exit polls were the economy. That's always mm-hmm. the number one issue every cycle. All right. And the number two issue was judicial appointments. Among those who voted on judicial appointments, Trump won those voters by about 25 points. 
In other words, without it wasn't the the promise to build the wall. Those are the two big. That was the biggest promise he made his whole candidacy. Nor the repealing of Obamacare, which was a big promise that Trump made, but Republicans before him were making for several years before he came on the scene. Right? Okay. Even though those were, from a messaging standpoint, the dominant promises of that campaign, substantively. The number one issue that propelled Donald Trump ultimately to the White House were judicial appointments. That is, for many conservatives, particularly Christian or social conservatives, that's really the last link of connection that many of you have to the Republican Party. And so therefore, if, if Mitch McConnell, who, has been, who played a heavy-handed, a heavy-handed role in unsevering Several of, the, of all the pre of all the other links that we no longer are connected with, right? I mean, he he played a very heavy-handed role in the undoing of the rest of those links that made you want to vote Republican. Okay, if he undoes this one too, if he lets Barack Obama appoint Antonin Scalia's successor, I promise you there is no way. Not only no way Trump wins, Republicans get annihilated in that election. And so this wasn't that this wasn't, you know, Rush used to talk about accidental journalism. This wasn't accidental courage of conviction for Mitch McConnell. This was actually done in line for all the reasons he's done everything else, his own power and survival. They had to keep this going. They, They at least had to keep the mythology of vote Republican for better justices. They had to keep it going. If they allow that to be exposed to there's you're really out of reasons to vote Republican other than, um, I, you know, I'm just a, a GOP cult. There's no affirmative other reason other than that. It's my graven image. Similarly, Republicans, even if they even if there are some that want abortion up to birth, and I am confident there are, they're not going to say that. They, first of all, they don't have to. There's already a political party that'll do that for them and, and take all that heat for them. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's, that's not something that even if you want, you, you have to push for. There's already somebody giving agency to that position, right? Mm-hmm. But secondly, if you were to do that, okay, it is one thing to imply you are willing to give a woman a constitutional right to kill her kid by limiting... By, by allowing it up to a certain point in time. It's another thing that just codified explicitly. Same thing here. It's another thing. It's one thing to say, well, I don't think there ought to be any federal laws. It's a such divisive topic ought to be decided at the state level. It's another thing to say, I think we should just let, you know, I'm okay if you want to kill your kid after, you know, right up to birth. I'm okay. Like literally the head's popping through the birth canal, you know, do the deed. They're not going to do that for that reason. It would, it would blow up the scam. It would be honest, but then you wouldn't vote for him at the critical mass they need. So the lie will continue instead. That's why I'm going to sell on this, Todd. What he said. Really? Yeah. Don't want to add any of that at all? It's too damn dark and depressing and pointless, and I'm already at the point of not voting, so why... You're going to need, need a vinegar pick-me-up here at the top uh, of the hour. Yes. What what is the what is the Urzan vinegar pick me up like when 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 you need when you need to self medicate what's the go to vinegar flavor for Todd Urzan? No, it's just always the same thing, just apple cider. That's the one. Okay, so a, a little sweet with all of the rest of the dour. Yes. Okay. That sums me up, right? <laughs> I think we got that. Oh. Um, <sighs> I can't tell if we're being trolled with this next one or he really means it. Okay. Matthew. I want to get your name right, dude, because my last name gets butchered all the time. So I'm sensitive to this. I want to say it's. Pekinat. I think that's what it is. Probably not. It's probably not, man. And I'm sorry, dude. I, sincerely, I am. Okay. I'm That's my best attempt. Let's just go with Matthew. All right. Matthew P. Now you sound like a rapper. Matthew P. All right. Matthew P. says, buy, sell, or hold, desperate Republicans will try conservatism and make Chip Roy or Thomas Massey speaker. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. 
You missed April Fool's Day by about two and a half weeks, bro. Come on. I don't see. I think the latter part is possible, but not because they're desperate, because they know it's pointless at this point. That could happen. Pure, pure fig leaf. So I think it's I think it's possible they could end up there, but it's way too late in the game to. I mean, at some point, you can put in the the chosen child, and it just doesn't matter anymore. You right? mean, but, is, are you depicting a scenario like what happened with Churchill, for example, where the elites are convinced well, that the the country is lost, the war is lost, nope. they're back channeling with the Nazis as we speak. So we've got this guy over here that claims he's independent, he's belonged to both parties, he's pissed everybody off, he's got a million enemies. Go ahead and let him be prime minister now, so it all happens on his watch. That movie's actually, and then, they, and then they had really no idea how that whole thing was going to well, actually turn out. But he yeah. actually turned it around. And there's a movie about this called The Darkest Hour, yet yeah. our our point might be darker still, I'm saying, in terms of if it, it simply can no longer be reconciled. And then there's a bunch of people who resent people like Chip Roy, and they want to give it to them just because they can't possibly succeed, and so they want to see them burn. Yes, I can see that happening. Hmm. That's dark just essentially finally giving into the base, but only when they're ultimately just set up to fail, they couldn't possibly be yes. successful. Yes. You are going to need some vinegar. You are going to need a shot of apple cider vinegar during the top of the hour, dude. I mean, a, that that's ass, that's that's not even obsidian. That's acid rain levels. It's the vinegar of, that gives of, me that level of clarity. <laughs> we might have to take you over uh, to the cannabis shop during the brick, honestly. Okay. <laughs> I'm Can you, anybody got a stork to bring us some gummies for Todd? I'm Eric Cartman. All I see is black. <laughs> oh, gosh. I mean, that's pretty dark, dude. I mean, that's... Yeah, they'll finally let us run the thing when it's into the ground and it can't be uh, saved. And so yes. they can blame us for everything it? that they did to bring us to the brink. I know you can see it now. Yeah. I hate you sometimes. I do. Well, I think we got through like five of the 400 of these that's been sent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get through as many more as we possibly can. We'll see if we can, I don't know, have wife's, Todd's wife call him or something, okay? Uh, see if we can get him out of the, uh, the black hole that he's deep within. More in a moment. All right, we are back here with hour two. Here Up on the with Steve people. Day Show. That's right. Hey, dude, during the break, we uh, tapped a vein, and uh, Dr. Feelgood came by and uh, just injected intravenously some apple cider vinegar, and you're seeing things in a whole new light now. You're feeling pretty good. What's blacker than black? <laughs> you're feeling pretty good. <laughs> All right. Let us know what you think about what we think via the SteveDace.com inbox. You can email us, Steve at SteveDace.com. Like us on Facebook, MeWe, and Gab. You can follow me at Steve Day Show on Twitter, get our Instagram and TikTok. And then you can also, uh, if you are a podcast listener, if you wouldn't mind, leave us a five-star review. And thank you to all of you who have. Uh, and then finally, if you are a podcast listener too, please hit subscribe or follow. If that's iTunes, you hit follow. That way, every time we do a new episode, it will show up in your podcast feed every single time. And we appreciate all of you that have done those things for us as well, as we appreciate our friends over at the America's uh, Christian Credit Union. There used to be a time, you know, when our financial institutions had respect for their customer values, when they shared in helping to build and maintain our communities. That seems to have passed. Banks these days, all too often, they're in the tank for pretty much everything we stand against. But thankfully, there is another option. America's Christian Credit Union is the number one banking institution on Public Square and has provided a full suite of financial services to God-fearing Americans just like you for more than 65 years. So families, ministries, businesses across the country ditching big banks and choosing ACCU as their trusted financial partner instead. When you make that switch, you'll get great rates, cutting-edge mobile banking, and the convenience of more than 35,000 branches and ATMs nationwide. Nationwide. So why keep doing business with financial institutions whose interests don't align with yours? I saw yesterday, uh, Dr. Eastman said um, he got canceled. He got debanked. 
We're seeing more and more of these stories, all right? So uh, make the switch now uh, to America's Christian Credit Union today. Start doing business with people who share your values. You can find them online at americaschristiancu.com. See you for credit union. americaschristiancu.com slash switch is where you want to go. americaschristiancu.com slash switch. And the America's Christian Credit Union is federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. All right, let's get back to some buy, sell, or hold. Bottom of the hour. I don't know that we can do Daniel this week. I'm gonna have to call him and tell him this is Todd is too dark to now bring you on. Hey, I'm just answering the questions provided me. I'm the victim here, really. I'm like Mary Jane Watson yesterday. So we've gone from just asking questions. I'm just answering questions. Yes. Yeah, ask me no questions. I'll tell you no lies, kind of thing. I hear you. All right, let's do this one. Okay, how about we we'll start with a positive? Tyler Bruder says The Incredibles is the greatest animated movie of all time. Its combination of fun for kids and deep themes for adults is unparalleled. Um, I think that's probably true. I think it's at least in the conversation yeah. with like the first Shrek, right? I I, I would say um, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, the first one I would put in that conversation. But I mean, I'm fine if you want to go with The Incredibles. Um, I think Up is in that conversation. OK, uh, but uh, if you want to. But the Incredibles for me is at least in that conversation. So I would buy. Yeah, I, I mean, it is. It's a little hard to believe. It's uh, it's kind of in the genre of how Endgame ended up like right getting under the wire before 2020 and everything happened. It, it's hard to believe those things were actually made. I know at this point. And just a few years ago, don't Incredibles 2 is underrated. Oh, it's very Remember good. who the, the villain of Incredibles oh, yes, 2 is? Like a proto-feminist who tries to convince the mom that she's That's unsatisfied and to leave her family yeah. and everything else? Yeah. So, hmm. Okay. Um, escapist wage slave. Now you're speaking Todd's love language today, all right? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Todd's like, I wish I would have thought of that first. But you made me go with Dace Online instead. All right. Escapist Wage Slave says, buy, sell, or hold. Gen Z will experience the greatest trials in American political history, such as a $100 trillion debt crisis before the age of 65. The Republic will either begin its restoration or experience its last gasp under Gen Z. Buy, sell, or hold. Buy. Yeah. I think we got to... We got to think at the very least that this is the trend line, not because it is the trend line. I will sell because on, on this one, I'm actually, I am more raised the black flag than you. Uh, I, I don't think that, I, I, I think that we are on the precipice of so yeah. many things that, that getting to Gen Z, I think would be a W. I'm, when I say getting to Gen Z, I mean, like I don't think, you know, uh, necessarily um, zombie apocalypse, Rick. Okay. I'm not saying we are the walking mm -hmm. dead, but I, I mean, in terms of having a, a tipping point possibility of, of reversing and stemming the tide that we're on, I, I don't think we will have until Gen Z's ultimate emergence to, to make that case. I think that case is being determined yeah. now. That, that's, that, that's why I did what I did during this last primary cycle, even though a lot of people told me not to including people who care about me. Um, but th that's why I did those things. I mean, I, I, I did that because I, I don't think we've got 30 years for Gen Z to ultimately determine where they stand. You know, I, I don't. Um, and I, I think we're under a much more immediate threat than that. And I think if, if we're able to hold all this off long enough that Gen Z could represent a tipping point generation one way or the other, to me, that's a win, I think. I mean, that that is a win to me. Um, I mean, we, we, because systemically we are, in, we are in existential peril on a comprehensive level on many fronts. So bad and badder. That's yeah. what we just did. Yeah. Yes. Um, B. Chamber says, buy, sell, hold. The two most important truths from the day show. Number one, Jesus walked out of the tomb like a boss. Number two, we are not a nation of laws and never have been. We are a nation of political will and always will be. What do you think? Are those the two most important creeds of the program? E yes, I think so. I think so. 
there's um because embodied within uh political will is it, and it is at the very least implied what are you prepared to do how uncomfortable are you prepared to get that's in there so yes mm -hmm. I think that's a good I think those are good too brother and and I'll add to what Todd said by uh by by submitting that ultimately you know like Jesus when Jesus is asked what are you know what's the most important commandment he says love the Lord your God with all your heart soul mind and strength and the second most important is just like it love your neighbor as you love yourself all the law and the prophets can be summed up in these two statements right okay similarly I think these two statements summarize the entirety of um the worldview that I operate this show under all right so who is God number one okay Similar to love the Lord your God while their heart, soul, strength, and mind, right? For me, Jesus is God. Then number two, now we get to this. So that's the vertical, you know, you know a, a statement of truth, of, of meta-truth. Now what's the horizontal statement of meta-truth is ultimately um, this is the state of mankind. Okay, His, JFK's history is won by those who show up. Okay, um, there's lots of sayings like this, you know? I mean, but um, this is where... You know, Samuel Adams, it's always been the tireless convicted minority yeah. that has enacted the most change. All right? But number two is my way of, of, of summarizing mm -hmm. all of those various statements. This is God. Yep. This is country. Yep. Exactly. Right there. Yep. Are you, what are you prepared to do as a citizen? Yep. Exactly. Lives, fortune, sacred honor, or Netflix and chill? Denise Harrison says, buy, sell, or hold, RFK Jr. will garner at least 20% of the popular vote in November. I would have bought this in January. In fact, it was one of my top 10 predictions for this year that I thought he would exceed Ross Perot's 19% in 1992, which is the uh, by far modern record of uh, a third party candidate in the two party era, which goes back to uh, post Civil War reconstruction. I, I don't, I'll sell now. I, I don't think you'll get anything close to that. I think his. Um, I think his campaign, a lot of that momentum, I think, has stalled. I think his VP, and I'm not, I'm saying this regretfully, because even though I have some fundamental issue disagreements with him, I have an immense amount of respect for him on a man-to-man -man level. And there are some areas where, where I have as the utmost respect for him among virtually any national figure in the country. So I think he is necessary for the debate and needed, uh, if nothing else, as a cudgel to try to get something righteous and good out, out of the other major party uh, in their major parties in their current state. But I, I, I don't see that right now. Now I changed my mind. We are, we are what, how many days into this year? Um, about 120 days into the year, something like that. Okay. So could I change it again in 100, 120 sure. days? I, you, you, I could, you know, but as of right now, I would sell when at the beginning of the year, I would have enthusiastically bought mm -hmm. this. I'm selling and I wasn't as enthusiastic back then, even though he and I were from the same uh, anti-vax tribe before COVID and his vice president pick actually just came out with a very bold statement about the MR and a vaccines i give her credit for that but it's here's, that's not value added with this thing and i again i've always been skeptical about his ability to overcome uh the magical power of vaccines when both parties were drunk uh on the thing and the republican uh standbird remains as drunk as ever before i people are too desperate to seek out that alternative without being given a a reason on top of that Hmm. And that didn't happen. See, this is what I, I, I applaud her stance on vaccination. We already got that from him. He needed to do something with that that woke it up on yet another level on multiple issues like that. No one's talking about her. No one even knows who she is still to this day. Mm -hmm. That it's just and that's what it, it, it was such a huge, huge missed opportunity uh, on his part. And it just goes to show that he's probably I mean, I get he has to fund this thing and all that. It's all but he, he he's. On some level, it just looks, as I said before, he, he's just kind of playing a politician's game with this pick. And that's nobody wants him because he pay, plays politician's games. Exactly. I mean, if you can't get this woman to cut you the check that you need from her without her putting you on the ticket, well, that's pretty much the same game everybody yeah. else plays. Yeah. So either you put her on the ticket to get a check or she, or she wouldn't cut you the check necessary to put her on the ticket. I mean, there, there's just no way 
anybody would objectively look at, you know, look, just you know, pick somebody that a lot of people like all over the spectrum, Mike Rowe. There's, there's no way you can make any objective case whatsoever that Nicole Shanahan is a better choice for RFK Jr. than Mike Rowe. That, that, not a case to be made anywhere with one exception. She can cut a really large check. And Mike Rowe's not, you know, a poor man, but we're not, he's right. not the kind of guy that's funding a multi-state ballot mm-hmm. effort, okay? Um, you know, we're not, he's, 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 you know, he's not Leonardo DiCaprio, okay? So, but again, that goes back to what I just said. If, if that's what it took to get her to write you the check was to put her on yeah. the ticket, that is the same kind of quid pro quo that we get everywhere else already. So what's the point? Right. Then? Yeah. Okay. Let's do an errand here and take something more off topic because he likes to throw these in for us. Okay. Brent Hurth says Mount Rushmore of great of, of greatest debut rock uh, albums of all time. Debut albums. Okay. He has Van Halen, uh, the self-titled Van Halen. Okay. So this has like running with the devil and stuff on it. Okay. Guns and Roses, Appetite for Destruction. Mm-hmm. All right. ACDC, Back in Black, which is a bit of a cheat. Okay, even though it's one of the greatest selling albums of all time, it's not their first album, but it was the first one with Brian Johnson on vocals. Okay. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, it was because it's a test. It's a tribute to Bon Scott, basically. Yeah, he had drank, just drank himself to death previously. And then Led Zeppelin one. All right. Those are what he has. Has his four greatest rock debut albums of all time. That's on his Mount Rushmore. What do you think? Well... I absolutely concur with Led Zeppelin and Guns N' Roses uh, being on there. I don't... What? So what were the albums before Back in Black? Uh, like Dirty Deeds, uh, Powerage, okay? So like they had a ton of hits before yeah, Brian see, Johnson. Yeah, this is what I'm... Okay. This so Dirty read. Deeds, uh, Highway to Hell, all those were songs that were that were done okay, by Bob I thought Scott. I was missing something. It's they were a, they were already a world-renowned yeah. band. Again. Now, Back in Black took them into a different but stratosphere, and it was a new iteration of the band. Are you calling you calling Dude Foul on that, claiming it's kind of cheating? it's Peter Gabriel or Phil Collins. I know it's different. It's still, it's still Genesis. Genesis so. Fair. Okay. That's a fair. Okay. So I don't think that counts. Um, because I hate myself, by the way. Uh I'll buy because I um, I think a few of them are good calls, because I but I I agree with your technicality. I, I brought it up myself, because I hate myself. I went and looked at during I went just now and looked at Rolling Stone's list of the ten greatest debut albums of all time. This is their list. Wait, it so it's it's opinion. It's not right. Okay, yeah, it's yeah. not by like yeah, selling. Okay, yeah, yeah. got it. Liz huh. Fair. Exile and Guyville, The Clash, which I'm okay with that. Guns and Roses, Appetite for Destruction. Yeah. Okay. All right. Billie Eilish, not our generation, but given what she represents to the current one, I'm, I, I'm okay with that. All right. The Jimi Hendrix Experience, Patti Smith Horses, Wu-Tang Clan, Enter the Wu-Tang, uh, The Velvet Underground, The Notorious B.I.G., and, Ramo- and, Ramo- and The Ramones. That's their top 10 list. Hmm. It actually wasn't quite as tragic it, as it, I thought because like, we've read some yes, tragic ones from yes. them. Yes. Yeah, like that that was from that that's just to me an uh, you know, odd and eclectic. Not like I'm like morally repulsed like I typically am by a Rolling Stone list. Yeah. Okay. Um All right. This one I think is interesting. Uncommon sense says the only reason there was an American revolution at all was because King George III treated the colonial elites just as he did every other commoner. By Siller Holt. So his point is, hey, yeah, it's true. Many of the 56 men that signed the Declaration of Independence were wealthy landowners. They were accomplished, learned men of the era. And they knew that these wars and battles were going to be fought on their lands. And that's why we actually had a revolution because they were the elites of colonial society and they were getting treated just like the rest of the commoners were. And they, that, in other words, it wasn't so much that they were a, a, a unique generation of men of courage or valor. It's just that they were now also getting stepped on like everybody else is. So that's partially true, but 
they were quite uh, unique. And also, this is underestimating the pull of the the Tory uh, party and those who remain sympathetic with the crown. So I, I'm going to have to sell. I, I I I think there's a piece of this, but it, it it's not the overwhelming push of things. I agree with you. It's not the overwhelming push, but I think this is such a an important nuance to make in our current era that I will buy it. Because I, I agree with you that I, I don't think it was necessarily the driving force, but it 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 clearly was an impetus that that they were that, that they were being leaned on. It was more personal to them. They were not disaffected from it, living a you know holistically different under the British crown than the average commoner was. You know, they were being taxed and told to quarter red coats and turn in your guns like everybody else mm-hmm. was. I do think that is a factor. Sure. Okay, so I'll, I'll buy. Even though I agree with you that I don't think it was, I'm not as cynical as that, but I, I do think it was a factor. Okay. Um, John Cocktoston. <laughs> really? That's the name. You know what that's from, right? No, I don't. Watch. Oh, you're right. It is. I forgot. John Cocktoast doesn't. That's somebody. right. That's right. He makes it it's up. All, on the fly. It, it, it truly is all ball bearings these days. <laughs> I forgot that. You can't forget that it's all ball bearings these days. Yes. African American vote for 2024 will settle at plus 20 percent for Republicans, meaning Republicans will get over 20 percent of it. Secondary follow up: if plus 20 percent. The black lash will be attributed to racism. Did you just say that on per- the black that's lash? What, that, that's what he said. That, I'm, I'm just ri- I'm reading verbatim what he wrote. All right. So he thinks Republicans will get 20 percent of the black vote this year. And Trump got what last time? Did, wasn't it 13 or something? Uh, did you like say? Well, I think it was 12. Okay. Somewhere in there. 11 to 13. Okay. Somewhere in there. I don't think there's any way Republicans get more than 20 percent. Or even get to 20% of the black vote. I don't think there's any way I will sell. Which means I'm selling on the whole proposition because I don't think the first part can happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Although I do like the term blacklash, you know, so. And I appreciate the, that uh, that'll, that'll get me another mention in the Media Matters, um, you know, uh, weekly uh, newsletter they'll put out this weekend. I'll, that'll get me another uh, reference dropping that term. But I, I don't think there's any way Republicans get to 20, let alone more than that. I'd, I'd be stunned if they got 15 stunned yeah i tend to be with you okay oh where do we go next some of these are very complimentary to us in the show and i just like think it'd be really self-serving to read those you know so i'll give them a blanket thank you and yeah, move on to yeah, the yeah that, so let's do that so yes thank you guys i appreciate that um happy dad says buy sell or hold if we keep voting for the bad candidates we are given we will always be given bad candidates oh I don't, that's not, you've been saying this your whole career. So, yeah, that's a Dacey and Evergreen. It is, but we have to recognize that we can't fall into either fallacy, though. All right? I mean, good candidate doesn't mean perfect either. And there is nobody good but God. So, this is, again, my, this is my, how many years I've been doing this now? 18 year beef with the lesser of two evils is it's a fallacy and as a christian i don't think we should be arguing fallacies we should be arguing truth because everything is the lesser of two evils therefore nothing is and that that, it's not a standard i could i could we could turn anything absolutely anything in the lesser of two evils because first of all if we're if we're determining what is the lesser of two evils there is no biblical standard for the lesser of two evils so right away, the standard is subjective, right? It's not based on anything fixed, transcendent. It's, it's right away subjective in nature, right? Mm-hmm. And so then, then, it's, then it's just all opinion and sub, sub, subjection from there. there there's, there's, a, there's, there's, there's nothing holy happening in that transaction, which is why and I hate the phrase, which is why I hate doing it, which is why I don't use it to persuade people. When I, because every decision is the lesser of two evils. Victoria is doing a phenomenal job. If there are 9 billion people on earth. Could we have found someone that would be doing even better? Yes. Therefore, Victoria is what now? 
the lesser of two evils. You see what I'm saying? Everything Welcome is. to the show, Victoria. Everything is. <laughs> Next time puts herself on screen underneath her name. What did I, lesser of two thinking, evils. What did I do? <laughs> Intern Victoria, lesser of two evils. Uh, but I mean, everything, everything is the lesser of two evils. Everything is. Everything is. Therefore, nothing is because the whole thing's a fallacy. It's, it's, it's moral subjectivism. It, it, we ought to be arguing things from the premises. What's the most righteous thing I can do? And then, are, then are there things that I could do that cancel out the other righteous things I do? And, and are there things a candidate can say that cancel out the other righteous things or do that they can say or do? And the answer is yes. Look at our own lives. Okay. You can commit, Todd, a lot of great deeds and, and acts of righteousness. All right. You go out, drink too many beers, and get behind the wheel of a car, and you kill somebody. Yeah. Those are going to cancel. The society has determined that that deed cancels out all the previous righteous things. You don't get to go before the judge and say, hey, here's all the money I gave to the poor. Here's all the volunteer work I did. You see what I'm saying? You don't get well, to do that. If you're a Democrat, you do. <laughs> Seriously. All right. You don't get to do that, okay, because you, this act yeah. is considered of such grave importance yeah. that it cancels out the other important and righteous things you did but they pale in comparison right mm -hmm. so if a candidate says for well steve i hate single issue voters everyone's a single issue voter that's another fallacy everyone is something tells me if 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 whatever if, if your name's john cocktoasten okay or and 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 we wanted to pass a law that said that's such a stupid name we can murder everybody named john cocktoast and something tells me you'd be turning a single issue voter real quick like right if a guy stood up and said hey we're gonna get rid of the income tax we're gonna uh, go back and have senators voted on by state legislatures um we're gonna give the line item veto to the executive we're gonna build a wall blah, blah. by the way i'm a child molester and here's my catalog of kitty porn. I filmed it myself. That would cancel everything out that he just said before that, Todd, right? Sure. So everybody is a single issue voter. Everyone is. It's just a matter of what is the singular, singular issue that for you would take precedence or priority over everything else. There's no one that isn't a single issue voter. And so there are absolutely things that someone can do or say that are so bad and so heinous, they cancel out the other good they can say or, ha or have said and have done. That's how our society works. Not everybody in prison was born a bad seed and all they did was terrible stuff. Okay. That's reality. So these are all fallacies, all moral subjectivisms that we utilize to justify making choices. We all know we really don't want to have to make. Well, we are really far down the pike on what you just um, said for a if we keep voting for bad candidates, we, they won't give us anything but bad candidates. Well, it's it, we've gone past like the rational, I just got to accept this too. I mean, we're just fully a Pavlov's dog mm -hmm. because we did that even though we were given a good candidate. Iowa evangelicals voted for the alternative two to one, as I've said many things before. I mean, we've been so conditioned by this thing. I mean, we're in Bruce Springsteen's name, like the dog who's been kicked too much. He just spends all his time covering up now. I mean, we can't even, it was right there. Mm -hmm. Take him. Nope. I, nope. Doesn't feel right. Can't do it. So it's, 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 it's black. It's like I said, Steve's been saying this for a long time, which means that this thing has tentacles now that are way worse than what you're just saying. All right, let's do a rapid fire round. Okay. Okay. Uh, buy, seller, hold. Bill Snyder is a top five best, most influential football coach of all time. No. Oh. I'm going to buy. You look uh, at what I, he did at that program. It's, it, it's, the, it's the greatest reclamation I job don't. of all time. Hey, listen, pound for pound, if that's what we were doing, because when I, I'm a Wisconsin basketball fan, I, I say the same thing about Dick Bennett, who – was before Bo Ryan, what he accomplished that year with taking the team he did. I but is Dick Bennett top five in the history? And I think you were doing something more along that lines. I can't elevate Snyder to that level, but if you give me that on the pound for pound scale, I would give it to you. Wrath of Khan, love your name. Uh, he says in three to five years, the United States will essentially resemble the corporatist dystopia depicted in Disney's Wall E, otherwise known as the by and large. Bye. The only reason I wouldn't buy is, is is three to five years too soon, but we're oh. heading down that road. 
I think um, we're lying to ourselves. I think we're already there in many respects. Uh, defensive mindset training. Buy, sell, or hold. Five songs with the best guitar solos. November Rain, Free Bird, Through the Fire and the Flames, Alive, Stairway to Heaven. Sell. Many sure. of those I wouldn't even pick. I'll buy actually. it. I would be entertained by all of them. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to sell. Um, Vexed says, buy, sell, or hold. Steve Dace will shed tears during the show before the end of the year, as I do many days listening to you. <laughs> I love that. I think, I think okay, that, I, sure. I, I don't know if that's a compliment or not, actually. Uh, cigars and coffee by Siller Hold. The deciding political factor of who wins in November hasn't occurred yet due to the uncertainty with the economy, Ukraine, Middle East, Taiwan, and potential domestic issues that pop up organically before early voting starts. So I think that's possible, but I think most of it is already baked. All right. Let me, this, uh, here's, this is an important question. So let me take an extra minute to answer it. I agree with this with the premise of this. I'll, I'll buy, okay, but 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 that doesn't mean there aren't constants baked into the math that anything that all the things you're listening or listing w- won't be filtered through. To me, there are there are two constants in this election, and then I think everything else is a variable, like you just articulated. Okay, um, the two constants are number one, they like like look at how we've just allowed them to legitimize this. It went from stealing elections to ballot harvesting to turnout yeah. operations. All right, so and all the people that made the most amount of money bitching and moaning about this have nothing's been done the whole time. Not not nothing's been done to counter the machine that they have over there. And we saw it kick our ass all last year in midterm, or I'm sorry, in off year in special elections. So that's a con. The constant is they will have the superior turnout operation that's a constant doesn't mean it's insurmountable but it does mean that their margin for error is going to be greater than ours okay yes by a significant margin what's significant a point two three five somewhere in there okay uh, that you will have to, you'll have to make up all right so they're they're going to have the superior turnout margin i don't think that's even debatable at this point that's constant number one constant number two is that donald trump has done nothing to make himself more likable to the american people and seems incapable of that so everything will get filtered through that, in my view. Doesn't again mean it's not winnable or insurmountable, but those are the two constants of this election cycle, and both of them, I think, are working against us. More in a moment. You know, for a decade now, Patriot Mobile has been on the cutting edge of helping to usher in the parallel economy as America's only American mobile phone provider. And this is one product we all pretty much need to have access to in this day and age to thrive in modern America. Thankfully, you no longer have to directly give money to people who hate you and you get a fantastic product to boot. Outstanding is the customer service team at Patriot Mobile. They're U.S. based. What does that mean? It means you can understand the words they say. Uh, And anytime you're within their network that you need uh, help. Uh, For example, you may need a switch from one of their networks to another because of uh, you're making a switch and where you live or where you work. They can do that for you anytime, free of charge. They'll customize, if you're switching from your currently uh, communist provider to them, uh, they'll customize that for you. You want to keep your phone, uh, upgrade your phone, you can do that. You want to keep your number, change your number, uh, you can do that. Uh, They will make it work for you and your family's needs at Patriot Mobile. If you're a veteran or first responder, let them know when you go uh, to make the switch and they've got extra ways to say thank you for your service. All of us get to the service of using my name, Steve, as a promo code in order to get a free activation if you switch to Patriot Mobile today. Promo code Steve. Make the switch today at PatriotMobile.com slash Steve. That's PatriotMobile.com slash Steve. Once more, PatriotMobile.com slash Steve. He is the prophet of woe and lamentation. He is our good friend, Daniel Horowitz. It's good to have you back on the program, brother. How are you? Hey, Steve, it's great to be in the WNBA of politics. So much fun. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Quantify, because most of our audience is not going to know what that means, because almost nobody watches the WNBA. All right. So when, when you draw that analogy, you mean what? I mean, that's why look at the polls show that despite having the worst economy, the biggest melees you could ever have in in politics, Democrats continue to win 
and look like they're winning their fifth election in a row. Because why would anyone see people watch sports because they want superior athleticism or, you know, sometimes they'll watch certain female sports. Well, for certain reasons, depending on the type of sport or, you know, the grace of female tennis, maybe. But WNBA just offers a less talented butch version of whatever. So there's no purpose to watching it. And it's a similar thing. There's just why would you vote if you're on the fence? What do Republicans offer you other than the butch, less talented version of what Democrats are providing? I mean, it's that simple. I would have pushed back against this until 2022. Uh, the 2022 election to me, Daniel, was was a real watershed just for me on a personal yep. level. And um, just seeing everybody who did this to us coming out of out of two years of hell that there were still a good deal of the country was still fighting to get out of and and we come out of that with with no disruption really at all it's the most incumbent friendly midterm election we i, I can ever recall uh, and statistically it was too when you look at the actual numbers so that's number one we we come out of two years of hell and yet there's no tantrum there's no anger there's no resentment and we just put all the same people in power who did this to us before that really uh, broadsided me and the other thing that it taught me is the old ebb and flow of politics now that that essentially one party particularly the republicans could just capitalize on the unpopularity of the other and their failures organically right you go back there was that moment during the 2022 election when rick scott was entertaining trying to get trump to back him to take out mcconnell and so we put out this his own version of the contract with america and you and i talked about it at the time and we're like this is all stuff we agree with you know from like 1997 remember this okay you know and it was but it, but it was at least something it was it was lame weak no, it had no chance of pushing back meaningfully what we were up against but at least it was some vision of why you would vote Republican and McConnell and no we can't have that we're just going to win by showing up no, 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 we're not going to do anything I mean no, have, have no record run on nothing nothing all right so on one end we've got a bunch of people that are tagged with the stigma of Trump's persona and then on the other end you got a, everybody else is tagged with the stigma of the Republican Party's weakness on issues that matter and that was the first time that 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 when the metrics all said it should have worked for you. All right. Um, that was the first time that the American people did not automatically go to the party not in power to send a message to the party that was in power. And and it seems as if we're all kind of acting like that that election didn't happen. Never happened. Okay, like that we, we're acting as if the American people will just automatically go to somebody. They'll, they'll automatically decide the mean tweets are bad. Trump doesn't have to run on any issues at all. The only issue he has talked about in like a month and a half has been abortion. I don't understand yep. what they're doing at all. Okay. So he doesn't have to run on issues like he did in 2016. Doesn't have to run on kitchen table issues and take the fight to the Democrats like he did then. They're just going to forget everything about him they didn't like before. They're going to feel sympathy for a guy they've never felt sympathy for before. Okay, and 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 then you know they're so we're just going to automatically swing our way and 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 then they're going to you know all the resentment that they didn't cash in in 2022 they're going to cash in now. Yep. It's it's like we didn't want to learn any lessons no. from that election at all, or maybe maybe I'm reading too much into it. What do you think? Or or if it if it does happen that way, then it's a hundred percent because it's stolen. Mm -hmm. Meaning it's per it perfectly works out that it absolves our people of any ability or imperative to change your game, do something different, and instead it just. We have this sea of apathy among our voters. I, I, I speak to men on the street, people in my community. Everyone I know is is right wing. OK, I mean, you have a conversation. They would agree with us on every issue, including the vaccines, whatever it is. But everything is basically like the bros be flipping. Yep. We're just going to win in November. No understanding of like, you know, that we continue to lose every special election five years in a row. And, and, and now, you know, the polls seem to reflect that as well. Um, nobody really thinks Republicans are going to even win back the House at this point. Um, now, Sabato, Larry Sabato, Sabato has uh, uh, at the Arizona Senate race as leans Dem. And then we're not just doing the same thing we did in Congress. The Boehner era was you have leverage and we underperform what we could accomplish with that leverage. 
Then we went to you perform zero. Now we're now at the point where every time you pick up the ball, it's an interception. It gives the other side more than what they want. So, Steve, two years after Ukraine, nobody's talking about it. Nobody's thinking about it. They created a cliff that after the Republicans didn't vote for it for a year, they cannot leave Congress. They're going to have a Saturday vote. You know, they, they usually are in like from Tuesday night to Thursday morning and then and then every other time they're on a two and a half week vacation. But this time, I mean, they need it. And, and it started out the Senate. You know, the Dems were 62 billion for Ukraine. Plus, they had Hamas. The Republican version didn't have Hamas and was 48 billion. Now they're back to the 62 billion plus the nine billion for Hamas as well. And and, and you know, Trump blessed it. I mean, at Mar-a-Lago, he blessed it two months ago. He blessed it then. I mean, I'm, I'm supposed to ignore that. Um, I, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, but they think that it's all going to work out. And then when I try to point out to people, like, you know, no, look, look what's happening. Like, yeah, you're right, Daniel. You know, they're just going to steal it. And, and I mean, th- this is what we've created a bunch of zombies where there is just no initiative to do what is in your sphere of influence. You know, you will never get a more vivid issue to the American people than the border invasion. You just won't. I mean, every day throughout the the budget fight, we had another story of a crazy gangbanger murdering people. Just now came across the wires, by the way, that an 18-year-old illegal let, let go by Biden um, likely killed a Nevada Democrat senator staffer. Senate staffer was was killed by one of them. I mean, there's nothing capitalized on, no sense of urgency, but out of nowhere, there's a sense of urgency for Ukraine. There was a sense of urgency to take the spy program that spied on Trump's campaign. And then not only did they reauthorize it, Steve, they expanded it. Hmm. Like they had an amendment expanding it to So it's not just Google or Verizon has to hand over the stuff, but any landlord or homeowner or barbershop or business office that provides Internet service that any human being who who accessed it that somehow was roped into a third party thing with the 702 surveillance overseas somehow then they have to turn over all their information. And Trump said at the press conference by the way, the same one that he promoted abortion, Obamacare for whatever reason. I don't know who who's talking about that now. I'm sorry, he calls it the ACA and Ukraine. He said, um, and I told them, you know, I don't like the program, but but vote the way you want. That's what he said. I mean, what am I supposed to do, Steve? Like literally, what am I supposed to do here? We were just discussing during buy seller hold. There are going to be. The current polling trend line is not good, Uh, and even though you wouldn't know it if you went to Real Clear Politics, for some reason they haven't updated the RCP average in 10 days, which is just amazing to me. Um, But but it's also, you know, April 17th. You know, you're probably already voting in California, New York. (laughs) Right. But but the, but the, the election really isn't supposed to be for another six months. There are going to be a lot of things that happen and a lot of organic issues that will ebb and flow. I do think in this election there are two constants, that, and, I, and, and I want you to get your take if you agree or disagree, and, and I think they're the, the two constants that these organic uh, moments will be filtered through in, in, within the electorate. Number one, you know, we, used to, we, we called it election fraud, then we called it ballot harvesting. We've just mainstreamed it for them now. Now it's just their turnout operation. And, and, and all kinds of people on our side have made all kinds of money and built all kinds of followings calling this out and turning it into our, an excuse for absolutely everything, but nothing substantively has been done. When you get beyond the talking point, they have this thing down for a science. We saw this last year in the, in the off-year special elections. We, we, we watched them blow us away in turnout operation. They, they, they will have the, the, t- the turnout superiority. What that means is that one point, three points, five points, I don't know, but it will be something significant. So more than a point, at least, they will have yes. a turnout advantage. Number two, um, 
Trump has done nothing to make himself more likable to the broader electorate. No. And and therefore, you have to ask, what's the level of suffering that will then cause them to overlook that and give him another chance? So unless he unless he is able to re, re, rehabilitate his image to some degree, I think those are the two constants in this election that I think everything else will will be filtered through, even including of things that we don't even know yet. Your thoughts? Well, I mean, they'll push back and say there's a third the bros be flipping that, you know, that that's a third thing. But the, the problem is, I mean, remember, I mean, I, I, you you discussed this on your show in 2022. We did see a bunch of polls that seemed to pick up on that. And it didn't materialize. Particularly meaning, with Hispanics. There were credible polls showing Republicans yes. were going to get like over 40 percent of the Hispanic vote in places like in Nevada, for example, never happened. But, on game but when you drill down into it, it's you know, it's in the margins. There is a little bit of a trend. I mean, legitimately, you look at Trump 2020 versus Trump 2016. Since it was a while ago already, Trump did carry five uh, four or five points more in the bronx so rather than you know losing it by 55 you know you'll lose it by 50 but the point is where it actually matters this is is a lot of articles have been written on this by people who actually decide to look at the midterm elections that the gains first of all they're, they're not enough in numbers to outweigh what they're bleeding with the white vote mm-hmm. but also it's very inefficient so it's either in states that you know, like blue areas are going to lose anyway, yep. or it's like in Texas, they are winning more Hispanic voters in the RGV. But, you know, I mean, there was a thought at some point Texas would go south. But I mean, you know, then you're really done. We're, we're going to win Texas and, you know, he's going to hold his own and do well in Texas. But in the states that actually matter, um, the 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 balance of the or, you know, between that is that Republicans will always be on the losing side of it. What, what you're saying, stop- what you're saying is that even if the bros be flipping on some level, many of them are going to be doing so in places we can't win or can't lose anyway. Okay, and yep. and so we're right back to suburbs, which the Trump campaign doesn't want to talk about, doesn't want to have a plan for, Bingo. because the suburbs have a level of comfort Suburb. that allows them to vote on likability other than larger cultural trends. That's really what we're back to then. And if you're not driving home crime and illegal immigration mm-hmm. and 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 the Lake and Riley stuff with leverage points that harness a national bank, like having a government shutdown, that would be the best thing to do. And you're talking about Jimmy Kimmel at night and then, you know, whatever the latest thing on, on the Manhattan trial is, you're not – doing anything i mean you're not moving the ball forward and then as i talk about ad nauseum on my show we still have not had most of the down the ballot primaries these are the most important legislative primaries of our lifetime you have the freedom caucuses are growing and have a lot of potential if you're in a rhino district in idaho and wyoming and south carolina missouri these are the most important elections of your lifetime but you know it's not cool because steve part of the problem is while we have the wnba in terms of performance we do have people in this industry particularly the ones with the largest audiences they earn nba level salaries producing wnba results go figure that out good to see you as always my friend thank you see you next week you bet Brought to you by our friends at Real Estate Agents I Trust. If you're one of those homeowners trying to buy or sell a home or both, uh, you've probably discovered by now that you've got a major undertaking on your hands. I mean, this can be one of the most stressful things you'll ever do in your life, but it can also be one of the most rewarding, particularly if you've got an agent you can trust. Um, Where would you find one? Steve, that sounds great. Where do I go? Well, the name says it all. Head over to realestateagentsitrust.com. They'll pair you with uh, a top seller in your area, people who really know what's going on in the market that uh, you're either trying to get into or get out of. Uh, A lot of times, they're going to come from right here in our audience, too, so you guys have that in common from a value system perspective, all right? So please check them out. Uh, Don't you dare go into the Let's Go Brandon real estate market uh, without an agent you can trust, and you're going to find them. The name says it all at realestateagentsitrust.com. Again, that's realestateagentsitrust.com. Todd, your closing thought here in the final minute we have. Um, should I interpret it, interpret that entire conversation as something drastically has to change for anybody other than a Democrat named Joe Biden to win the White House? I mean, I just, I, yes, but but I think things could drastically change. I mean, yeah. it, 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 would, tomorrow morning, if you found out that Joe Biden had a fall 
and could no longer perform his duties as president, would you be shocked to hear that news? No, but I would no. also be shocked if it didn't matter to people. But, well, uh, there, there, what, here's what is inexcusable. This is a, as many as is we're relying on things beyond our control and it didn't have to be like this. That's what you see what I'm saying. There are things beyond yeah, our control it, that could work in our favor. But right now we're largely relying on things beyond our control. But then Dan, Daniel, when he said the border, there's never going to be a more, how did he put it? An issue that should mm-hmm. be just as compelling for a number of reasons. And yet the polls are what they are. I mean, maybe it's time to stop is, shipping illegals to Martha's Vineyard and, and New York City and start sh- uh, shipping them trust, to suburban Philadelphia. Columns. Trust all your post-2022 election instincts. Well, we're going to find out one way or the other. Romans 828.